Welcome to day 46 of these daily devotions as we work our way through the New City Catechism. The last couple of days we've been looking at baptism, but for the next couple of days we're going to be thinking about the Lord's Supper. So here's question 46. What is the Lord's Supper? And here's the answer. Christ commanded all Christians to eat bread and to drink from the cup in thankful remembrance of him and his death. The Lord's Supper is a celebration of the presence of God in our midst, bringing us into communion with God and with one another, feeding and nourishing our souls. It also anticipates the day when we will eat and drink with Christ in his Father's kingdom. What is the Lord's Supper? Christ commanded all Christians to eat bread and to drink from the cup in thankful remembrance of him and his death. The Lord's Supper is a celebration of the presence of God in our midst, bringing us into communion with God and with one another, feeding and nourishing our souls. It also anticipates the day when we will eat and drink with Christ in his Father's kingdom. And the reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. The Apostle Paul writing here to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And the reflection today is written by Ligon Duncan. In the Lord's Supper, we have a remembrance, a celebration of God's presence and an experience of communion. We also have something that nourishes us. And in the Lord's Supper, we anticipate the glory to come. First, we have a remembrance in the Lord's Supper. In the Lord's Supper, Jesus told his disciples that they were going to proclaim his death until he comes. Every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we are to remember the meaning and significance of the death of Jesus Christ on our behalf. We are to remember him. He said, do this in remembrance of me, Luke 22 verse 19. We celebrate the glorious work of atonement that Jesus Christ accomplished for us. Second, the Lord's Supper is also a celebration of God's presence. Isn't it amazing that we're invited to slide our knees up under the table of God? That is especially amazing in light of our rebellion. In Genesis chapter 3, Satan said to Eve and to Adam, take and eat this fruit. They ate the fruit against God's command. And what was the result? Did it result in their satisfaction and fulfilment? No, it resulted in their being driven away from the presence of God. But at the Lord's table, the Lord himself invites us back into his presence. When Jesus said to his disciples, take and eat, he reversed the words of the serpent in the garden. Every time we hear the minister say, take and eat all of you, it's a celebration of our reunion with God, his presence with us and our enjoyment of his near fellowship. Third, the Lord's Supper is a communion. It's a communion with God and with his people. We not only commune with the living God by grace, we not only commune with the living God by what Jesus has done for us on the cross, but we commune with one another. When we're united to the Lord Jesus Christ, we're united to everyone who is united to the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, the Lord's Supper is spiritual nourishment. It's a means of grace. It's one of God's appointed ways by which he builds us up and nourishes us, confirms our faith and strengthens us for growth. And the Lord's Supper is an anticipation of the glory to come. Yes, in the Lord's Supper, we anticipate 
the marriage supper of the Lamb, where we will sit down with one another in glory. What a joy it is to come to the Lord's table. Look, while baptism is an individual act, the Lord's Supper is a corporate act. It's something we do together. The clue is in the title, isn't it? Communion or common union. When we celebrate the Lord's Supper together, we remember what we have in common, what unites us, a disparate group of strangers into the body of Christ, brothers and sisters in the family of God. We remember our common union. We remember together the atoning death of the Lord Jesus Christ for us. That's what unites us. We remember and give thanks that because of his shattered body sacrificed for us and his shed blood poured out for us, we can, to use Ligon Duncan's wonderful phrase, slide our knees up under the table of God. Well, I love the image. What a joyful meal this is then. In many churches, the Lord's Supper has been turned into a, a, a sombre time of personal reflection and confession. And there are times when that's appropriate. If we're caught in sin, if we're confessing sin, if we're aware of our, our own sense of uh, failure in that area. But actually, it should more often be a joyful time of corporate thankfulness and worship. We're not mourning Jesus' death, you see. We're giving thanks for what his death accomplished. We're taking our cues from the Lord Jesus himself, who declared on the cross, it is finished. And that declaration was vindicated three days later when God raised him from the dead. Job done. That's what we're remembering as we celebrate communion together. It should be a time of thankfulness, a time of worship, Yes, even a time of joy. We're giving thanks that we're forgiven and we are now part of the family of God, that we can have communion with God through Jesus and also with each other. The Lord's Supper, a wonderful gift to us, a, a joyful time of remembering all that the Lord Jesus has done for us and of the assurance that we have of our salvation because of that. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the Lord's Supper, for this celebration meal you have given us, to remind us of all Jesus accomplished through his death in our place. Help us to take and eat with thankfulness for our salvation and for each other. For we ask these things in his name. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. See you again next time.